But to honor Twitch, I think the best thing that we can do is to laugh and hug each other, and play games and dance and sing. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Ellen. Happy birthday to you. You didn't invite me to the party, so I'm just here in my office having shots. Ellen, were you surprised by the allegations about P. Diddy? Did that surprise you about P. Diddy? He's been on your show many times. Have you been to his parties? More and more celebrities keep getting exposed as being linked to Diddy's evil empire, and the name that seems to be on everyone's lips this time is Ellen DeGeneres. Paparazzi recently caught Ellen and asked her about the allegations against Diddy. And girl, she looked real nervous while trying to escape immediately. This raised many eyebrows and had people wondering why Ellen was nervous about being asked about Diddy, you know, given how close they are. Come to find out, Ellen might have much bigger problems to worry about, like allegedly being on the tapes Diddy took at his wild freak-off parties. And remember Steven Twitch boss? Well, people are now speculating that he might have known too much about Ellen and threatened to expose her, and that had gotten him deleted. And when you start to connect the dots between Twitch's mysterious passing and all the other controversies surrounding Ellen, you just shake that feeling that there's something very suspicious going on that we don't know about. You'd better grab a chair for this one because it is messy AF. What time would your party start, let's say? Like 9.30. Really? That early? Yeah. I could make that. Yeah. <laughs> but I think I could think of you of, of starting a party at like midnight. Like what time will it go that, till? That's a different type of party. Uh-huh. Ellen DeGeneres has been one of the celebrities linked to Diddy publicly over the years, and they've been in each other's faces a lot. Diddy has been on her show many times, and Diddy has invited her to his parties many times. Y'all might remember that one time Ellen asked Diddy if she was invited to his birthday party, and he said he always invites her to his parties, but she just never shows up. Well, tell me about your birthday party. Am I invited? Yes. Yes, you're definitely invited. Really? I invite you to all my parties. You just haven't seen me show up. To no, well, there... <laughs> Is it on the East Coast? Yes. Well, that's why. Why don't yeah. you have one here on the West Coast? Because I work all the time. Okay, well, maybe I have one at your house. Where's the... <laughs> <laughs> now, what time would your party start, let's say? Like 9.30. Really? That early? Yeah. I could make that. Yeah. <laughs> but I think I could think of you of, of starting a party at, like, midnight. Like, what time will it go that, till? That's a different type of party, though. Uh huh. <laughs> um, you no, know, it'll it go from like 9.30 to like maybe 3 o'clock, 2, 3 o'clock. And then, you know, we have the top two floors of the hotel. Mm -hmm. you know? And then it will carry on there. Well, people are saying Ellen actually did attend Diddy's parties, just not the types that can be talked about publicly. And if you notice, in that interview, Diddy made reference to a different type of party that started after midnight. Anyway, fans started digging up all this information about Diddy and Ellen because of a recent paparazzi footage of Ellen that went viral, where Ellen was asked about the allegations against Diddy, and she looked very nervous about it. It seemed kind of weird initially, because why would Ellen be nervous about being asked that type Type of question. She's literally a TV host who is used to putting celebrities on the spot with out-of-pocket questions like that all the time. And being Diddy's friend and all, Ellen must have known that sooner or later, someone would ask her about Diddy, right? Well, it's not as simple as that. Allegedly, Ellen has a lot to worry about concerning Diddy because she wasn't just his friend on screen. She was part of his inner circle. I mean, it's not every random person Diddy makes a toast to on their birthday, calling them the most beautiful woman he's ever met like he did with Ellen. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Ellen. Happy birthday to you. You didn't invite me to the party, so I'm just here in my office having shots in honor of one of the most beautiful women in the world. So, if Ellen was part of Diddy's inner circle, you can take a wild guess at the type of things she must have done or witnessed at his alleged freak-off parties. And y'all know that one thing about Diddy's parties is that there have been some wild conspiracy theories about them. From secret rituals to orgies and forced gay freak-offs, it's a real cocktail of some of the craziest things you've ever heard of. Sources are now saying that Ellen allegedly witnessed some of these activities when she hung out with Diddy and that she might have even participated in them. But that's not even the craziest part. There have 
also been speculations that Stephen Twitch Boss, who worked with Ellen for almost a decade, found out some incriminating information about Ellen that connects her to Diddy and he was planning to spill all the tea. I mean, you don't get to work closely with someone like Ellen without finding out one or two things about them. And if you're very smart, like people say Twitch was, then you notice more than a few things and start putting two and two together. To be clear, none of this is confirmed and it is all just hearsay at this point, but people are talking and it's only so many coincidences you can have before everything starts looking like a real wacko scene. I mean, there were speculations about people like R. Kelly and Harvey Weinstein years before the truth finally came out and look how that ended. That said, one of the things people really noticed about Twitch's death is how many of the details just don't add up. For context, Stephen Twitch boss passed away in late 2022 and left a trail of broken hearts in his wake. Official reports say that Twitch had checked in to the Oak Tree Inn on December 12, 2022, and he was supposed to check out at 11 a.m. the next day. When Twitch missed his checkout time, motel personnel went to his room to check on him, and that's when they found his lifeless body with a gunshot wound to the head. Another guest who was also at the motel when the discovery was made talked about how it all went down. Official reports say the wound was self-inflicted and that Twitch actually left a note, which they weren't allowed to publicize for obvious reasons. However, TMZ reported that law enforcement sources confirmed that the note made some ambiguous reference to Twitch's past challenges, which he felt he couldn't recover from. When this little detail got to the public, people started playing detective, trying to figure out what these past challenges were and what could have prompted Twitch to do something like that. One conspiracy was that Twitch might have run into some money issues due to some bad crypto investments. The explanation for this at the time was that Twitch followed some suspicious accounts on Instagram that could have led him into bad investment decisions. Actor Columbus Short further fueled this conspiracy by hinting at it in a video. Yo, so, um, just got off the golf course again. Still, um, you know, RIP Twitch. And what I talked about earlier, you guys don't know what people are going through. Um, you know, people made investments, people do a lot of things. Um, this is just a theory. Um, and, um, you know, people are awful. You know what I mean? Like people, like Twitch are not awful. Twitch is amazing, was amazing, it is amazing still. His legacy shall live on. But, you know, what if you invest in something um, that uh, took your whole life savings, possibly? Um, yeah, it gets, it gets rough. It gets rough. Um, you know, I don't want to speak too much on that, but here, what I will speak to, Tracy Christian still haven't given me my money. And this is what I'm talking about. It's like, why? Because you got caught up. You can't pay me my money in a trust account. I do not trust your account. I do not trust you, Tracy Christian. And I'm not going to kill myself. I promise you that. So pay me my money. However, TMZ reported that sources with direct knowledge said Twitch was not experiencing any sort of financial hardship in the leading up to the incident. Also, law enforcement sources said no one from the family mentioned any sort of financial issues with Twitch. It was a pretty open and shut case. But while some people were calling for Twitch's financial history to be looked at, others were saying we need to be looking to the wife, Allison Holker, for answers. This one was a bit touchy for a lot of people because if you had been following Twitch and Allison, you would know that there wasn't really any Anything to hint that she had anything to do with his death or that he took his life due to challenges in their marriage. In fact, Twitch and Allison always appeared like the perfect couple with the perfect marriage. They first met in 2006 when they were invited to a party hosted by their mutual friend Ivan Kumayev. However, they didn't really start talking until 2010 when they both appeared on the All Stars episode of the seventh season of So You Think You Can Dance. But they finally made a move on each other during the season's rap party, and it was up from there. The first time we met each other officially was on the show So You Think You Can Dance. It was our first All-Star season. And yeah, we were both All-Stars. But there was no romantic 
like thing at the beginning. Like we were just, we were Say for like, uh, I, I'm just saying, <laughs> I was in, I was in all of her as an artist as a dancer. I was a long time fan before we even dated or anything like that. I remember watching, I just like walked in, I sat down, and the way he was addressing his partner, he was so kind and he was so helpful with her. And I just felt like he was like such a gentleman. So for me, I immediately had a crush on him. We shared a dance at the rap party of that season, So You Think You Can Dance, and we have been together ever since. There was like no dialogue, there was no like conversation or like a first hangout. Literally, we danced and we were together, like holding hands the very next day and never looked back. Twitch said he knew Allison was the one just three months into their relationship, and by June 2013, Twitch popped the big question while they were filming a commercial. All the places I've been, all the things I've done, you're easily my greatest inspiration. And I would be honored if, um, if, I could spend, <laughs> if I could spend the rest of my life with you. So, Allison Hopper, um, will you marry me? <laughs> However, fans thought it was sus that the moment the news of Twitch passing went live, Allison released a statement that said, It is with the heaviest of hearts that I have to share that my husband Stephen has left us. Stephen lit up every room he stepped into. He valued family, friends, and community above all else, and leading with love and light was everything to him. He was the backbone of our family, the best husband and father, and an inspiration to his fans. To say he left a legacy would be an understatement, and his positive impact will continue to be felt. I am certain there won't be a day that goes by that we won't honor his memory. She then concluded by saying, Stephen, we love you, we miss you, and I will always save the last dance for you. The reason why this statement felt suspicious was that it just seemed weird that she was ready to address the public so soon after getting such a shocking news. It was almost like she wasn't surprised by it, probably because many issues were going on behind the scenes in their marriage. Fans latched onto this idea even more when it was reported that Twitch took an Uber from his home to the motel, which was less than a mile away and switched his phone to airplane mode so no one would contact him. According to TMZ, Allison showed up at an LAPD location the following day, frantic that her husband left home abruptly and he wasn't answering her calls. She also said there wasn't any argument or issue before he left and he just stopped communicating with everyone. It looks like Allison actually insisted that the LAPD take Twitch's case seriously because she had a really bad feeling about it. When authorities spoke with staffers at the motel, they also said Twitch didn't appear upset and he only showed up with a small bag and booked a single night. However, other fans said Allison didn't have anything to do with it, and she also said in an interview that no one had an inkling that he was low. He didn't want people to know. He just wanted to be everyone's Superman and protector. She also said, it's been really hard because I can't understand what was happening in that moment he died. I still feel like I'm like the rest of the world. I'm still shocked. No one's ready for that moment, and there's no one that saw this coming. No one. And... That also breaks my heart too, but I feel so sad that he was so there and we weren't in the knowing. He wanted to be the strong one for everyone and I think that was a little scary for him to think that he might need to ask for help. You know, people say a lot of like, what were the signs and, you know, it, he was so much love and light. He really wanted to be everyone's Superman. He said that a lot. Everyone's Superman? Everyone's Superman. But this only made the whole situation more confusing because Twitch's activities leading up to his death didn't seem like someone who was on the way to unaliving himself. For example, on December 10th, just two days before he checked into that motel, he celebrated his ninth anniversary with Allison, sharing throwback pictures from their wedding with the caption, Happy Anniversary, my love. Allison also shared a video montage from their wedding set to Adele's one and only with the caption saying yes to twitch has been one of the best decisions i have ever made in my life i feel so blessed and loved i love you baby and i will never take you or our love for granted they were like the happiest couple in the world like literally in november they were just talking about having another kid in november now it's very possible that twitch could have been battling his demons inside and hid them behind smiles mental health struggles can manifest in many ways and it isn't always easy for men especially black men like twitch to open up about their struggles but some people were 
are suggesting that the note that was found in his motel room needs to be investigated to make sure he was the one that actually wrote it because there were speculations that Twitch might have been deleted by some higher-ups in the industry. And the first person on the list of suspects was Ellen DeGeneres. Twitch started working as a DJ on Ellen's show in 2014, and he even became an executive producer in 2020 and was with her till the show ended. In those years, Ellen and Twitch became close friends, and Ellen never missed an opportunity to show him some love on the show. She paid tribute to him in a post where she shared a photo of him along with the caption, I'm heartbroken. Twitch was pure love and light. He was my family, and I loved him with all my heart. I will miss him. Please send your support to Allison and his beautiful children. Hey, everybody. Everyone is in pain and trying to make sense of it, and we'll never make sense of it. And the holidays are hard, I think, anyway. Um, but to honor Twitch, I think the best thing that we can do is to laugh and hug each other, and play games and dance and sing. And I know it seems hard, it seems impossible, but that's how we honor him and hug each other and tell each other we love each other and let people know we're there for them and check in on people. He was pure light, as everybody in the comments said. If, if you knew him, you knew that. If you didn't know him, you saw it. Let's honor him and think about him and send love to one another. People started drawing connections between Ellen and Twitch's death because it was believed that Twitch knew some things about Ellen, and he was planning to expose her, so she staged the whole thing to make it look like he unalived himself. There was also the fact that Twitch was not the only person close to Ellen who had died mysteriously within the space of one year. For those who don't know, Ellen's ex-girlfriend, actress Anne Heechi, lost her life on August 11th, 2022 in a tragic car crash. Anne was pulled from her burning car after she crashed into a home. As we can see the, uh, the helicopter video there of the car in the house, you can see firefighters on the scene there uh, taking that car out from the house, Fox 11 in Los Angeles. And according to USA Today, she suffered a severe anoxic brain injury as a result of the crash. Anne fell into a coma and spent one week at the hospital before she was taken off life support. Ellen left a message on Twitter that read, This is a sad day. I'm sending Anne's children, family, family and friends all of my love. But folks found some of the details surrounding Anne's death strange for many reasons. Firstly, she was initially reported to have been driving under the influence and acting erratically at the time of the crash. However, the LA County Medical Examiner Coroner announced that although Anne's autopsy revealed that she had previously taken substances, she was not under the influence of anything at the time of the accident. This is what further fueled the suspicion that there was something fishy about two people closely connected to Ellen losing their lives so tragically and under such mysterious circumstances. And this is where the Twitch angle comes in. But what could Twitch possibly have known about Ellen and Diddy that made him a potential target? Well, fans are saying it doesn't take a genius to see how similar Ellen and Diddy are. Apart from the fact that Ellen allegedly used to attend Diddy's parties, fans have speculated that it's easy to see how Diddy and Ellen could be in the same weird cult because of how similar they are. As y'all know, Ellen is usually referred to as the meanest woman in Hollywood, and she didn't get that reputation by chance. She has been known to be mean to her audience and her staff and just generally cold to people around her. Take her 2008 interview with Mariah Carey, for example. When Mariah appeared on her show, there were rumors that she might be pregnant, but she hadn't confirmed anything yet and didn't want to. However, Ellen tried to pressure her into admitting she was pregnant and even went as far as trying to get her to drink champagne. And then the other thing is that people are saying that uh that you're pregnant. There, there's rumors. Don't discuss that. <laughs> um, all right. Well, you don't have to. Answer. No, that's okay. No, no honestly, you don't have to answer. Me. Let's just toast with champagne and decide. Well, they've if, been uh, saying that since we. Oh, I can have a, uh, some champagne. It's it's just fattening. So, you can you know. have champagne. That's not champagne because you can't. No, it is. One. Is it really? Yeah. You want to you want to taste it? I can't believe you did this to me, Ellen. What? No. Are I'm, you trying? I'm to not going to ask you if you're pregnant. This or not. is peer pressure. Say. You see what Ellen is doing? This is peer pressure. No, let's toast to you not being pregnant. If you're not pregnant, then oh we should. Oh my goodness. I can't believe her. Why would we toast to that? <laughs> How about to the 
future. Yeah. You can and for both of our futures, who knows what they hold? Who knows? <laughs> All right, go ahead. Okay, cheers. Yeah, cheers. It's too early for me. Yeah. I only drink it after 3 p.m. Yeah. Mm. You're <laughs> Mariah later talked about this infamous moment in a 2020 interview with Ellen, where she said she was extremely uncomfortable with that moment, and she had a hard time grappling with the aftermath. Then, there was the iconic moment when Dakota Johnson flipped the script on Ellen after she tried to put Dakota on the spot. Sorry, yeah, wasn't invited. Actually, no, that's not the truth, Ellen. You were invited. Last year, no, last time I was on the show, last year, you gave me a bunch about not inviting you, but I didn't even know you wanted to be invited. Well, because I didn't, I didn't want to be invited to a party. Well, I didn't even know you liked me. <laughs> <laughs> of course I like you. You knew I liked you. You've been on the show many times, and, and don't I show like? <laughs> yeah, but I did invite you, and you didn't come. So This time you invited me? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. How do you know? I don't think so. Ask everybody. <laughs> Jonathan, the producer. Okay. I was invited. Why didn't I go? I don't know. Was it, was it? Oh, yeah, I had that thing. Um, <laughs> it was probably in Malibu. That's too far for me to go to. Yeah. Yeah. It was. Yeah. No, I think I do remember I was invited. Thank you. Um, no, but I, I really didn't remember that until just now. All these moments put together made people realize how horrible and downright mean Ellen could get just to get views for her show. But that's not even the worst part. Ellen allegedly also treats her employees like they're beneath her. For example, she allegedly writes these weird lists of all the trifling things she believed her employees were getting wrong, like serving food in the wrong bowl, misplacing the salt shaker, or failing to froth her latte to her taste. She would sometimes lay traps before she left for work, strategically placing matchsticks behind cupboard doors and cushions to see if the cleaners were actually cleaning every inch of her sprawling mansion. It was so bad that a top security firm allegedly cut ties with Ellen because she supposedly didn't like the way their employees walked. Ellen also famously has a thing for firing her employees unprovoked, which is just different levels of means if you ask me. It sounds a lot like how Diddy allegedly treats his own staff. Some of you might not know, but before the Cassie lawsuit, Diddy had faced several other legal issues with the women around him, including his former chef, Cindy Rueda, who sued him for harassment and wrongful termination. Cindy claimed Diddy used to make her serve him and his friends while they were improperly dressed, and she was forced to interact with Diddy's male friends even when they were being creepy with her. She also claimed that when she complained about it, Diddy fired her. Also, isn't it weird how Ellen found no issue with displaying an exposing photo of Justin while he was on her show and then asked him some really weird questions about it? Bungalow. Yeah. And you, because usually we're all pretty good at spotting paparazzi. Yeah. They, they hide in boats yeah. and pretend to be fishermen, yeah. and, and we're like, yeah. you're paparazzi. I mean, we, we're yeah. pretty good at it. How did you not see that there was paparazzi there? Well, I just didn't see them. I think I wasn't really looking out for them either, so. Was there a boat? After, when you think back on it now, can you see where they may have been? Um, were yeah, they in a I boat? Could, yeah, they're definitely in a boat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And when, how quickly after that was shot did you realize that that happened? Did that go on wire right away? Uh, the, yeah, it was pretty much like a couple days, it was like a couple days later, Scooter hit me, he was like, yo, I hate to tell you this, but it's on the internet. It's kind of like how her friend Diddy put Justin on the spot when he asked why Justin doesn't hang out with him anymore. And let's not even begin to get into all the things Diddy allegedly did to Justin. In fact, fans are now wondering if Ellen knew what Diddy was doing to Justin all those years ago, and if she did, what else did she know about Diddy's shenanigans? Now, if Twitch knew even a fraction of the things he is believed to have known about Ellen, it makes sense that she might have seen him as a threat and deleted him. Then again, others have speculated that Twitch might have been sacrificed in one of those Illuminati sacrifices Kanye is always talking about and Ellen might have offered him up. But anyway, fans are starting to connect the dots and saying someone needs to look into Ellen. One said, of course she attended, and of course she knew everything. She was complicit. Can't stand this Hollywood conspiracy. Another said, it's so disgusting and very disturbing what Ellen did to Justin Bieber and a lot of other guests. Not to mention her whole staff, but it's even more disturbing that she has never been held legally accountable in any way for her behavior toward her staff or 
more prominent guests. But y'all, let me know what you think about Ellen DeGeneres' allegedly attending Diddy's parties, and you think she unalived Twitch because he wanted to expose her? Comment down below, and we'll see you in the next video.